welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for one of Tonic's 2022 birthday sets, which is called Christmas Cheer, and it is a um, really like gorgeous, cutesy Christmas um, A5 stamp set. Plus, you're also getting a stencil as well. And actually, I'm not sure if there's more than just the stocking that matches, but at least the stocking uh, is like actually matches the stamp so you can actually colour your stocking with the stencil um, design which is really cool and you can also do some fun like layered sort of backgrounds combining your um, stenciled poinsettias with your stamp poinsettias if you want to or just bringing in some little motifs and maybe matching um, the holly stenciling with some holly stamping as well or all sorts of different bits and pieces you've got on here and these are great for building backgrounds but also as little focal elements as well and don't forget you don't have to just um, ink through a stencil uh, on one of the cards I've used that gorgeous poinsettia and I've done uh, nouveau mousse through the stencil so I used crackle mousse and um, expanding mousse and glacier paste as well and it works fantastically you could do that for any of the designs on here and I always tend to forget the most obvious thing that you can do with a stencil is draw through it and use it as um, an actual template to, well, a, a traditional kind of stencil to actually get the design as well. So if you love your um, zen tangling or just doodling in general, you can get um, take a fine pen or even a pencil and trace around it and then come back in with some other uh, maybe alcohol pens or gel pens or something that you've got and add extra details into it, fill in the designs or um, you know just add little star designs as little scatterings across your card use those gorgeous swirly flourishes as an extra little element in the background even if you just used a clear sparkly gel pen so it's very subtle it just adds something extra to the card so when the recipient like tips it in the light you can see those gorgeous extra details so I love that they've given us um a stencil to go with this set and I love that you've actually got that stocking that coordinates with the stamp as well and I have done a card using those two together to show you how that kind of works as well so let's have a look at the lovely stamp set first and it is packed full of designs in here but we've also got a lovely mix of sentiments as well and I love that we have a mixture of sizes of all the different bits and pieces so we've got like big focal elements but we've also got small little elements that can just be used to create a card by themselves even though they're small little elements you can stamp lots of them and create an overall background like I've done on one of my cards or you can um, maybe even build your own wreath or extend a wreath or something you could stamp half of this and extend it down to be like an archway or something for a card you know keeping the um, the curved top piece and build an archway down using like the small little holly, the little pine cones and stuff like that to build the rest of the reef design down your card as well. You don't have to just stick with it in that circular shape which is nice. But anyway, let's have a look at everything in the stamp set. So the first stamp you can see here is a gorgeous poinsettia that's got um, a really lovely cluster in the centre that is perfect for your Nouveau drops. Um, Sometimes when you put Nouveau drops that close together, you see how they're all sort of touching. If you do your Nouveau drops a bit too big, they might all blob into one. So a way around that is to either uh, pre-make them and then stick them on, and you can use your little Nouveau embellishment tool to pick them up and stick them back on. Or what I tend to do is if I'm doing a card um, that has lots of flowers on, or if I'm making um, you know lots of cards that are a similar theme and I'm using lots of poinsettias, I would um, stamp all of these out color them all in and then if you come in with your nouveau drops and just do some of them so not all of the ones that touch each other the ones that are like further away from each other do those with nouveau drops leave them to dry and then you can come back and put the nouveau drops in the other places and then you'll still get that lovely separation of all the little uh, bits in the middle of the flower uh, rather than them all blending into one big nouveau blob in the center but if you don't want to do that, then one big Nouveau blob would work quite nicely in the centre as well. Even a button, actually. I've got a white button just uh, laying on my desk here. You could even put a button in the centre of that poinsettia um, to give it a different sort of quirky feel to it. And you can also uh, layer this up as well. So it's not... 
specifically designed so that you can like cut one out and put it on top of the other. It kind of is an odd shape because it's sort of got one, two, three, four, five petals that would be the top layer, but there's an, a big gap between them here. But if you're um, cutting it out and putting another one on top of it, it's going to look totally normal to have that missing gap there because you've got the, the petal underneath it as well. But also if you wanted to um, properly, cr I mean, I know this is a stylized sort of poinsettia, the, the petals aren't exactly the same shape as one, um, but if you wanted to create that kind of look of the green leaves at the bottom of the poinsettia you could um, cut an extra one, snip a few of the, the petals off of this and poke them out um, from the back of it as well. Or you could use um, this separate little leaf that you've got here too, so there's options for adding foliage to that. The next little stamp as you go along are these two gorgeous little birds. Um, I tried to colour them as robins, although I'm not sure the red on a robin goes right up to the face, so I'm not 100% sure uh, what kind of bird they are, but they're just like um, a little generic bird that you could colour um, to be... I don't know if it would work for a cardinal, it might work for a cardinal as well, but gorgeous little generic kind of birds. And the thing I love most about these little birds is, well one, that we have both of them so they can face each other on a card, but also if you see down here, we have their legs. So you can actually stamp their legs in whatever position you want and you've got both of them there as well. So one works on one bird, one works on the other bird. And so you can have them standing on something or um, you don't even have to have their legs on there at all and they could be nestled into the wreath or something as well. But I love that they've given you the option of having the legs too. And if you are doing um, any kind of 3D-ness with them, you don't have to um, do what you'd usually have to do and stamp uh, the bottom portion of the bird with the legs onto your background piece so you still had the legs there you know you can just um, stamp the legs and then put the bird on top with a 3D foam pad and it works quite nicely doing that sort of thing then we have this little kind of um, branch with a couple of pine cones on which is uh, very nice as I said before for kind of extending a wreath design or even just creating an entire wreath from it as well because the branch has got that curvature to it so it would um, you know with the uh, when you cut two squares um, twisted into a piece of card to create that um, template for you to be able to then place your square piece of card back in and, and keep stamping and turning it round to do that wreath builder kind of idea. You could definitely do that with this sort of stamp. Even with the robins actually, that would still work um, with the robins. Then you've got a little present or a little parcel with the string tied on the top of it. Then we have got these gorgeous little uh, designs or little elements here that I didn't actually end up using. I didn't use the branch or these little baubles here or the hanging sort of star decoration. But these would be fantastic for minimalistic, clean and simple and quick Christmas card ideas. You could just have them dangling off of the branch and one of the birds sitting on top of it or something. Or you could create um, a complete sort of design out of these, um, you know, making them flow all the way across a card, having them dangling at different lengths you could not stamp the little loop that's on the stamp and you could actually uh, thread or like sew an actual piece of string through the card as well to create a different design. You can embellish these with the little holly that's next to it as well. So you've got a gorgeous little cluster of two holly leaves and a couple of holly berries as well. You've got the leaf that I mentioned earlier too. You've got the gorgeous stocking that matches with the stencil and I'll show you a card with that on too. But if you don't like doing stenciling or you just don't want to use the stencil, um, it's got beautiful patterns on it that you can just easily colour with your pens as well. Or it just looks nice stamped in a colour of ink as well for a background or something. You have got a lovely Christmas tree, a very nice... Um, full kind of Christmas tree it's got lots of uh, branches coming off the side rather than like the the typical sort of like three-tiered sort of Christmas tree you've got the more um, branchy spiky bits coming out the side which is quite nice and you've got like a garland or something going around it plus some stars and some different little baubles hanging on it as well so you can colour them to go with whatever colour scheme um, you're doing for your card then you have this gorgeous little, um, almost looks like a pom-pom, but I think I used it as more of like a snowflake in a background design, but always useful to have these little stamps. You've got another sort of little starbursty one there, um, and a swirl here as well. Great for just adding into your backgrounds or filling up a little bit of empty space. You've got a little tiny present with a side view of um, a gorgeous like pointy little bow on there, which I love. Uh, you've got a little star which actually has like little shine marks in the centre 
picture and the star works perfectly on top of the Christmas tree as well so you've got that to go with that which is really nice you've got another gorgeous uh, flourishy swirly design perfect for your backgrounds too you've got um, a couple of snowflake designs as well this one um, is almost like an outline of a snowflake so if you had a steady hand and a fine pen you could fill that in with a colour as well or just stamp it in a colour or heat emboss it in your background and you've got this one that almost could be the centre of a flower as well um, so if you wanted to do something different with that poinsettia you could maybe even use that as a flower centre and you've got another one of these little stars over here you've got this little um, branch um, it's a really lovely modern sort of little sprig I suppose it could be some kind of mistletoe with little white berries on it or it could just be a generic kind of plant with some wild berries growing on it as well and around that you have got the gorgeous wreath as well I actually use the wreath in conjunction with the reindeer but I think just by itself with one of these sentiments in the centre and maybe um, just heat embossed in some beautiful sparkly embossing powder or or um, coloured in with your watercolour pencils, your aquaflow, something like that. Just a really simple card um, would be very effective for your Christmas cards as well. Maybe even like a ribbon tied around the bottom or um, a, a little twine bow or a little ribbon bow on there as well would look really lovely. But I love the... Um, the modern kind of feel to this wreath and they've balanced it nicely as well when I was colouring it um, you've got like holly leaves balanced here so if you're using a different green for each bit of greenery it balances nicely across the wreath which is also lovely and you've even got like little bits of mistletoe in there too some like wild berries and um, other little branches of foliage as well so it's a really gorgeous design and if you felt like it needed to be a little bit fuller in an area you can add this onto it as well or you can go back up here and maybe add in um, one of those large pine cone pieces coming in the front as well So you, and even the little holly too you can add whatever you want to it really to sort of build up that design too and make it uh, fuller if you'd rather it be fuller as well and then finally for the images we have got the adorable little reindeer which um, as I've been talking my camera keeps trying to say that that's a person and focus on his face which is funny. Um, but he's so adorable. I love his pose as well and just the simplicity of that just the little dot for his eye. It just gives him a lot of character even though it's just a dot. Um, but I really love him. He's really really sweet and I've used him on a couple of different cards and I like that you um, have that kind of almost like a saddle on his back because you can can tie in different colours so if you have them in the middle of the wreath and you've only used um, red on these little wild berries or on the holly berries you can tie that colour in by colouring his saddle that colour or colouring his scarf that colour as well so um, I love that he's got accessories on him so that you can tie the colours across too and it not just be like solid lots of brown for a reindeer although you could colour him different colours as well I mean I don't know if you can get white reindeer but you might be able to um, and you could do you know more of like a, a snowy sort of reindeer um, but yeah I think uh, he's such a sweet little design and he's a really decent size as well and he can stand on a landscape small sort of A2 A6 kind of size card as well you don't he doesn't have to just be on a portrait card which is nice um, but he would also fit quite nicely in a square as well I think and um, having him in the wreath um, like hiding his feet out down the bottom of the wreath and him poking out of it um, looks really lovely as well and that would work perfectly on a, on a square card or portrait or landscape on a small A6 sort of size card as well so those are all of the images and then for the sentiments we have five different sentiments to choose from and they're all in different fonts actually um, so you can kind of pick and choose the font for whatever kind of um, style that you've given your card whether you've gone with like bright funky colours or you've kept it monochrome or you've gone vintage looking um, you can kind of pick your font of sentiment to go with it so this one says to both of you at Christmas which I used with the both of the little birds on there I thought that was quite a nice idea but you could have two reindeer whether you stamp them sort of more side by side or behind each other or whether you use um, a jelly plate or one of those um, you know large clear stamps that you can buy that you can stamp a stamp onto and then you can press your card onto it and pull it off and then reverse it and um, you could have two of them facing each other in that case as well and that, that sentiment would work perfectly We've also got Jingle All The Way, which works really nicely to go with the reindeer. Then we have got Peace On Earth, which also goes nicely for the little birds, or you can just use that for any kind of occasion. In, in the centre of the wreath would look really nice as well. 
tis the season to sparkle which again if you're adding any glitter and stuff to your card it will go perfectly with the poinsettias the um christmas tree the stocking the reef the reindeer all all of the kind of elements will go nicely with that one and then i didn't actually end up using this one but it's a, a punny sentiment it says don't get your tinsel in a tangle so that goes perfectly with the christmas tree and i think if you um there is tonic confetti um I think there's been a few different ones over the years, like definitely been a clear one and a light blue one. I think there might have been a brown one as well, and there could possibly have been other colours that I've forgotten about, but it has those little strands in it. I think it's called flakes or something, the design of it. Um, but that kind of thing, you could do a bead of glue coming down here and then use that confetti on it, and it would really give that tinsel kind of look to your card, um, and then that sentiment would go perfectly don't get your tinsel in a tangle so I really enjoyed working with this stamp set and I think I've got seven cards to show you so um, quite a decent amount of ideas hopefully to inspire you for your Christmas cards either for this year or for next year depending how organized you are um, you might have already done all your Christmas cards I mean I've been working on Christmas cards since February but I've had to send them all away so I've made like probably over a hundred Christmas cards but I don't have any so I'm gonna have to get cracking on making all of my Christmas cards um, and I can't wait to play with lots of these bits and pieces that are Christmassy from the birthday week celebrations. So uh, we've also got the gorgeous stencil, which is one of their um, kind of smaller size stencils. It's a it's a bit smaller than a, um, a f an A5 kind of set, but it's bigger than an A6 one. So I suppose it's more five by seven ish kind of a stencil um, and it has the typical tonic studios little tab here which just really helps you um, if you've been using paste or something with it it really helps you grab a hold of the stencil and be able to pull it off quite nice and easily um, so on this stencil we have got a gorgeous poinsettia we have got a little flourishy swirl here we've got a leaf we've got oh this uh this might match with that one actually Okay, it doesn't match, but it's a, a different size, so you could do a really cool background stenciling some of these and then stamping some of these onto there as well, which is fantastic. Um, you've got the stocking, which you can just use by itself to make a simple um, inked stocking background, but you have the stamp that you can over stamp with it as well. And on my card, I was a little bit off on a couple of them, but I still think it looks really nice having the kind of offset sort of um, colouring in it as well. It gives that... Um, graphic or like mono printed or potato stamped kind of uh, feel to it I think. Um, then we've also got a present in here as well. We've got some little uh, starbursts which kind of match um, a couple of the stamps that we've got in there as well. We've got a little Christmas tree here and actually yes that little star there will fit in that Christmas tree too so not only can you use that star on the top of the battery you can also stamp that star in your stencil tree if you want to as well and see this is what I mean this is more of like a typical um, Christmas tree that you would see in more of like a cartoony form it's usually only got the three bits on but I like that this one has more kind of branches to it as well it kind of makes you think that it's a, um, a really nice big tall tree actually although it has got a tiny basket or bucket so <laughs> it might not stand up that great if it was that tall but anyway um, you've got these gorgeous swirls here which could act as like wind or it could be um, like magic sort of you know flowing in around the Christmas tree and then you have some of these little sparkles and stuff like that and it could be suggesting that Santa's on his way and there's like magic coming or something um, you've got a little uh, cluster of holly which has got the three berries on this one and the two leaves which you could use in conjunction with the little stamp or you could use it um, as like a subtle background to go behind the wreath or something you've got a large bit of foliage which has got some lovely um, leaves on there which it's quite a nice big design so I suppose actually because it's got that curvature to it you probably could stencil a wreath all the way around with lots of these branches maybe even have them coming outwards a little bit more and bringing it around that idea I don't know if it's possible actually with a stencil maybe it's not as easy with a stencil I was going to say the the wreath building kind of idea 
but it would be difficult to keep your stencil in exactly the same place. But you could do that kind of idea, you just have to sort of wing it and not use a template, but that would work really nicely. And then you also have this little one as well, which is more of like a little uh, modern little sprig. So I suppose if you turned these birds into more like a dove, um, and coloured them in, you know, whitey grey kind of colours rather than as a robin. Um, you could use like this little sprig or this little one as like the dove carrying the little branch as well. So, um, hopefully I've given you a nice up close look at all of the little bits and pieces that are in um, this Christmas cheer stamp and stencil birthday week set. And I'll be back in a second to show you the seven samples that I've done as well. So these are the first two cards I got to show you, which was utilising that gorgeous poinsettia from the stencil. And you might be thinking, how was I so precise with getting just the poinsettias and not all of the other bits and pieces? I just take some washi tape and um, just mask it off. So you just mask off that little swirl. I know I don't want that piece. I don't want the little leaf that's there. I don't want to get any ink on that part of that present and I don't want to get anything down here either and depending how precise you are with your ink blending or with using your spatula to apply um, 3D kind of um, mediums and stuff or you know using a sponge to get like glacier paste through it you can also mask off these larger edges or put some scrap paper over the rest of this to make sure you're not going to get um, any ink or any products where you don't want them to be because especially with using red, red is kind of difficult to like scrape off the card or um you know kind of correct it's very pigmented you probably notice that when you've been working with stuff that red is usually the color that's going to stain something um even stencils actually um but yeah so that is how I've been more precise with my inking. So I was using the poinsettia on this one and I did it for the stocking as well when I was working um on one of the other cards too. So I thought I'd just mention that in case you wondered how I managed to get um, such a nice sort of clean stenciling. Then let's show you this one first. So this one has just got glacier paste and um, crackle mousse on here and you can see how beautifully it's cracked. I really love crackle mousse. I, I can't believe I almost forgot it existed and I was looking for red mousses in my drawer and I was like crackle mousse obviously how did I forget about it? I think it's because we've had the chalk mousse recently um, and it's in the same shaped pot and I kind of just completely forgot that we had crackle mousse as well but um, yeah I really enjoyed uh, playing with that again and I love the effect that the crackle mousse gives and I've got kind of um, something to show you on the other card as well to do with the crackle mousse it didn't actually crack in those, oh no it's maybe there's a little bit of cracking in those little circles but the petals cracked really nicely I love how that looks and I did the glacier paste first um, and because I applied it with a sponge um, it doesn't take too long to dry because it's a, like a really thin sort of layer that just gives a little bit of that gorgeous sparkle that glacier paste has and you can see here there is a difference between two different colours because one of them is the original red which is called hope red or hot red I'm not sure how to say that word and then the brighter red is the crushed cranberry which I think was last year's colour trend, the Santa's Workshop, I think that's when this one came out, uh, but it's a really gorgeous bright red compared to the original red, they <laughs> practically look the same on the camera. Now you can see that's more of like um, a dull sort of red and this is a very bright red, um, perfect for Rudolph's nose actually, that kind of colour. Um, so that is that card, just layering up a few of these poinsettias and actually I don't know if I can match it back up again because I did take this strip out and I'm not sure where I took that from. It's almost, you can almost see the exact match of it here. I actually did the glacier paste and the crackle mousse on an A5 piece of card and then I cut it in half and I added some expanding mousse to this one as well to make it different. So um, you can do like larger sheets of this and cut it down even if you've got the crackle it's still cut with my guillotine right up against it so it's really easy to cut into and then I use that little extra strip. This bit was like quite empty so I use that extra strip just to kind of fill in there as well um, because I'd you know cut my panels down and I had that little bit of extra. And then also to kind of fill in the background a little bit on this one, I had some of my um, glacier paste left out because I had been decanting a little bit onto my mat and then picking it up with a sponge. Um, so I just sprayed that with water, watered it down, got a little paintbrush and splattered some of that in the background as well. So you've got little splatters 
um, everywhere as well. I used the Jingle All The Way sentiment and then I've also used some Dream Drops and this is Rudolph Nose which was from Santa's Workshop last year but the gorgeous bright red Dream Drop which has kind of like um, a goldy sort of mica in it. That one's really squashed, it was at the bottom of the pile. Um, but yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous colour that one. I really like that Rudolph nose. So that is the first card. And then the second one is exactly the same starting point, but I added the um, expanding mousse onto here. And then I also came back in with some of the Rudolph's nose to go in the centres of the flowers of the glacier paste flowers. And I forgot to tell you the crackle mousse colour name. It is rose hip. So I suppose it's supposed to be more of a pinky red but I just used it as a red red and it worked quite nicely and then the um, expanding mousse is red leather I'm pretty sure yeah red leather expanding mousse um, and you can see how that kind of expands and then the thing I wanted to show you is because I'd already put the crackle mousse on crackle mousse does not like to be heated you have to leave it to dry naturally and you want to also leave your card um, to dry naturally and raise it up off the surface because you need the air to circulate all the way around your card because if the underneath of your card is still damp you might think that because it's all cracked um, that it's dry enough and then you'll start moving the card but because the surface or the interior of the card isn't quite dry you might end up with little bits flaking off but if you make sure so maybe you've got your glacier paces gla sorry glacier pastes out on your desk still leave your piece to dry like that so it's actually raised up from your desk and the air can circulate around it and then you're going to get um, fantastic results with your crackle mousse so if you've ever had a problem with it cracking off it could be that you've applied it too thickly but if you've just applied it through a stencil like this then it's probably because um, you didn't let it completely dry before you started playing with it and bending it and stuff um, so if you ever have had that problem then let it dry with air circulating around it and it, you should be fine but you're also not supposed to heat crackle mousse it really doesn't like the heat you have to leave it to air dry and you can see here what it does if you do heat it um, so because obviously I was applying heat to expand the mousse and it obviously you can't control the heat that much it got onto the crackle mousse even though the crackle mousse was already cured and set and had cracked and everything adding that heat onto it still made it bubble and give it a different texture so I guess if you wanted a different um, mixed media kind of texture to something you could heat your crackle mousse after it has cracked and you would get this kind of effect but I thought I'd just show that to you because I don't think I've ever applied heat to the crackle mousse because I knew you weren't really supposed to and I never really put embossing powder near it or expanding mousse or something that required heat to be added to it um, so I thought I'd just show you that as kind of like a you know word of warning if you are sort of doing that as well and it's also happened up here a little bit where that was close to it as well but I just thought that was kind of an interesting effect actually um, but just do be careful when you're heating your crackle mousse because you're not really supposed to heat it but if you do accidentally then you get that kind of a um, result from it so that is the second card and I did Tis the Season to Sparkle on this one and then I've also, I did a bit of splattering of glacier paste in the background and I also used the Rudolph's nose on the centres of all of the glacier paste um, poinsettias in the background as well. Right, the next card I've got for you is again using the stencil but in conjunction with the stamp. So first of all, I did the same thing that I was doing with the poinsettia but I masked off that little stocking. It's kind of much easier to do, you only really need two bits of tape here. But um, I think I did actually add tape around the outside edge. Just make sure, um, if you are adding tape around the outside edge, make sure it's not too tacky. Um, sometimes washi tape is, has like no stick at all and other times when you don't want it to stick it really sticks um, so just be a little bit wary about how tacky your tape is around the edge because if you think about it when you're working you want to press hard to make sure the stencil isn't going to move and if you're then uh, you know maybe holding it at this kind of angle here and the way you work you hold it like this then you're going to be pushing down on the tape that's overlapping here and you might get it stuck to your card and then it might rip it so just a little word of warning um, for that as well 
but this one I did literally just take um, the stencil for the stocking and place it around in all the different places uh, that way as well I think did I no I didn't flip it don't flip it because if you want to use the stamp with it you want to keep it this way round and you know which is the right way round because you'll be able to read tonic studios at the bottom of the stencil so if you can always read tonic studios you know that a stencil that coordinates with a stamp is going to work um, so you can just do that all over to fill in the design um, I felt like it was a little bit empty still so I brought back in that little star there I forgot I even did that on this card <laughs> it's a good job I remembered that they go they do work together when I was talking about it earlier but I then I just stenciled a few of the stars around so I did tape off around the edge of this so just that star was visible um, to make it easier for inking as well so I've got all my stockings and my stars in place and then I just came back in with the little star stamp and the stocking stamp and then stamped all over it. You could if you wanted to um, use your stamping platform however I think if you don't mind it being a little bit offset like mine is which I quite like this look of it being offset because it means you don't have to worry about being too perfect and accurate with it. I just used acrylic blocks to stamp mine and I just made sure I was using a pigment ink because they always stay nice and juicy and you know you're going to get a really good impression that you're not going to have to try and go back over the top with or you could use your um, clear mark ink pad and do heat embossing over the top as well if you'd rather. Um, but I just stamped all of the stockings back over the top and all of the stars over the top of the stars as well. Um, I used the Jingle All The Way sentiment again and from this distance I don't think you can tell that there is any stamping in the background but I just came back in with the marble statue um, ink pad, the little Nouveau uh, diamond ink pad and came in with that little sort of uh, snowflakey pom-pom kind of thing and um, some of the swirls just to fill in a bit of the background and give it a subtle pattern and then I've just come in with my uh, Dragon Scales Dream Drop as well, still one of my favourite colours of Dream Drop um, just to add some little accents over the background as well and I did also splatter some of the Dream Drops as well so I just squeezed them out onto my glass mat which actually I don't think that was the dragon scales I think that was the cloud nine color which is the white one so I squeezed some of that onto my mat added some water mixed it up with a palette knife and then took a fine paintbrush and splattered it onto the card as well because you can see that's got a pinky mica in it which is um, in the cloud nine dream drop as well and you can see there's just sort of that extra detail across the card then and the ink colours I was using were the oxide inks which is why I did the stenciling first then the stamping because um, they've got that pigment ink in them and if you did the stamping first um, you could smudge it because you, you know a pigment ink does take a little while to dry but also uh, because they've got that pigment um, aspect to them it could have um, covered up some of the line art as well. So if you're using your oxides, do your stenciling first and then stamp afterwards. And I was using the salvaged patina and cracked pistachio as well were the two colours that I was using. Um, so that's the third card. Uh, the next card, I also used those two same colours of oxides. But for this one, I did my background first. So I did pine cones, holly leaves, the little starbursts and like snowflakey things and that little present a little branch as well I did all of that stamping with my uh, clear mark ink pad and then I white heat embossed it and then once that was heat set I came back in and ink blended over the top um, to make all of the embossing pop out with like the resist effect you can just use clear embossing powder if you're working onto white card as well but sometimes white powder just gives a crisper kind of detail for you and then um, after I, I had done that I, I really liked using the stencils on the previous card so I came in and masked off this little leaf down here and I actually came back in with the same two colours of ink and um, added that in the background as well in a couple of areas just to add a bit of extra detail then the drops are also um, the uh, dragon scale dream drops and then for the Christmas tree instead of colouring the tree green because I'd gone with turquoise and like uh, minty sort of colours for the background I decided to do a white Christmas tree and then I did the pot to match and the ornaments or baubles to match as well and the tree is just um, white I did a little bit of light grey shading with an alcohol marker and then I used um, a clear sparkly gel pen just to add like some little branchy bits onto it that you can only really see when you tip it in the light but I thought that would be a nice little touch to it so that's the fourth card 
then um, I really enjoyed that um, like heat embossing in the background so I did this card which is just using that poinsettia heat embossed all over the background um, but I also had the glacier paste on my desk still from this card so I watercolored in my uh, poinsettias with the glacier pastes and then for the background I took um, some of the glacier paste, watered it down and used a wide flat brush and brushed it over the background so you've got more concentrated where I coloured in the poinsettias and then um, lighter application in the background but it's all completely sparkly but you've just got the variation in colours from adding more water to it. Um, the little sort of snowflakey pom pom -y things, I don't know what to call that, um, that I've added in the background, I was stamping with one of the inks that I don't use that often, or I haven't used that often, um, is the Raspberry Smoothie, and I thought it would go perfectly with these colours, and I think it stands out really nicely. I tried stamping with the... Uh, cherry blossom first with some little swirls but it wasn't very evident but I still obviously left them there um, and you just sort of have a ghostly kind of effect of them as well so you know go through your inks and see what will give you um, a subtler or more evident kind of look and also for the centres of the poinsettias plus the bit of splatter in the background that was actually another glacier paste which I didn't get out ready to show you but that was um, the one from the Harvest Moon colour trend, which is the bronze medal. So that gorgeous bronzy kind of colour. I thought it would work nicely with the colour of the robins as well. So having that little accent in the centres of the poinsettias and splattered in the background kind of ties the robin colour in. Um, and I've coloured in their chest to be red, although I'm still not sure a robin's chest goes all the way up to their head. It's more like down in their belly. But anyway... Um, they're a stylized kind of robin and I've used some browns to colour the rest of them in. I didn't use their legs on this one because one I wasn't that keen on cutting around them but also I kind of liked the fact that they sort of look like they're nestled in and then they're just sort of resting on the sentiment as well that just says to both of you at Christmas. So that is that card. Then the final two that I've done are using the gorgeous little reindeer. I really love him, he's so sweet. And you can colour him in um, different brown tones to kind of match or to um, make him a little bit different from other characters on your card as well. And ironically, I've used the same sentiment on both of these. I didn't realise that I had, um, but I think Peace on Earth does go nicely with him. He looks quite peaceful. But I used it on this card because it kind of nestles in with the circle die that I decided to use for the aperture as well. Um, and you can see how I've used the wreath there. I cut around the wreath, um, but then also put it inside the aperture as well. I I've used some of the Pearl Ripple Speciality card behind the aperture just so it's subtle being white but it's actually got that pearlescence and the pattern to it as well and then I've got him in the foreground I think I prefer this colouring of him than the one on the next card um, but it's sort of like a, a soft almost toffee kind of a colour um, for him on this one and then for the berries I didn't actually go with a red berry I went for like um a salmon pinky kind of berry so I did that for his little scarf and then I matched his like little saddle piece with some of the greens that I'd used on the wreath as well and I mixed the sort of greens on there as well so you've got more of like um, a minty kind of green and then more of like a yellowy sort of green as well um, and also across this one you know I had done a little bit of subtle stamping in the background of the stocking card I did the same thing across the outside of this aperture with the little branch and some of the swirls and I also drew some swirly bits in with a sparkly gel pen as well just to give a little bit of extra subtle kind of detail on there and then the final card is one of these like overall background um sort of design so it kind of looks like it's a patterned paper and you've just used a section of it um I went for more of a a greeny brown tone for these reindeer I'm not sure if I like it I think maybe if he wasn't near the robins, maybe he'd look better. But I'd already used the, the colours that I'd used here for the robins. And I didn't want it to be so much of that colour um, all over the card. So I decided to go for a different sort of greeny brown kind of colour. I don't think it looks too bad. I think it looks greener on camera than it does in person. Um, but he looks really cute anyway, whatever kind of colour you decide to colour him. 
I also gave him a spotty scarf this time as well to tie that deeper red kind of colour into um, a different area of the card as well um, and I used both directions of the robins on this card and I stamped their little legs on there don't they look so sweet with their little legs and obviously if you didn't want um, part of them to be stamped into the body of the robin you could make a little mask for your robin and then stamp them below but it, it looks um you know, you can kind of see that they're coming from his body then. it look, I think it looks better, actually, seeing them uh, partly stamped into his body. Um, I was admiring a little blue tit on one of my bird feeders the other day, and I, I, can't, I can never believe how skinny their legs are. They really are just like a little stick like that. They're so um, delicate, their little legs. So I really love that you get that stamp to be able to add them on. Um, so they're just really, really sweet. And I've also added the little presents in the background and the holly, and then I felt like it needed some Something a little bit more to kind of tie in the colours and bring it all together so I just took one of my uh, fine black pens and just drew some little circles in a few different places so that I could bring the colour um, all the different colours all the way across the card as well and I did do a little bit of um, clear sparkly gel pen doodles in there as well it's quite difficult to catch on camera but you can see it better in person but um, that is the last card that I've done so I hope you've enjoyed this up close video looking at the Christmas cheer stamp and stencil set from the 2022 birthday celebrations for Tonic. I hope you've been enjoying um, all of the different videos that I've been putting up this week for birthday week. Um, I don't know the order that they're going up in yet so this could be the first one, this could be the last one, I'm not sure. Um, but hopefully you've been enjoying um, shopping through the birthday event and I really really appreciate anybody who's used one of my affiliate links to purchase anything throughout the event as well uh, so if you click on any of my links below the video or over on my blog post it just means that uh, tonic knows that um, you came from me to go to their website to buy something and I'll get a small commission um, out of the amount that you spent but it's at no extra cost to you um, and I really do appreciate it it might only be like a few pennies but it does actually um, add up and I really appreciate you taking the time to find one of my links and click it and go and place your order as well really do appreciate it so um, thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoy the rest of birthday week or you have enjoyed it and I will see you again in the next video Bye!